of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Solomon the king asked God for wisdom. Wisdom to understand between or to discern between good and evil and to serve his people. Brothers and sisters, as we gather this weekend to celebrate this Eucharist, let us also earnestly ask God for that true wisdom. Wisdom to understand, wisdom to surrender, and the wisdom to trust that God has a plan not for our destruction, not for our peril, not for our ruin, but for life. We acknowledge our sins and we prepare, prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharistic celebration. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore ask Blessed Mary a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. 
Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of the Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask what you would like me to give you. Solomon replied, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David my father, but I am a very young man, unskilled in leadership. Your servant finds himself in the midst of this people of yours that you have chosen a people so many its numbers cannot be counted or reckoned. Give your servant a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil. For who could govern this people of yours that is so great? It pleased the Lord that Solomon should have asked for this. Since you have asked for this, the Lord said, and not asked for long life for yourself or riches or the lives of your enemies, but you have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself. Here and now I do what you ask. I give you a heart wise and shrewd as none before you has had and none will have after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We know that by turning everything to their good, God cooperates with all those who love him, with all those that he has called according to his purpose. They are the ones he chose specially long ago and intended to become true images of his son, so that his son might be the eldest of many brothers. He called those he intended for this, those he called he justified, and with those he justified he shared his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Blessed are you, Father, Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, our Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns, and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea that brings in a hole of all kinds. When it is full, the fishermen haul it ashore. Then sitting down, they collect the good ones in a basket and throw away those that are no use. This is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will appear and separate the wicked from the just to throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said, yes. And he said to them, well then, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his storeroom things both new and old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, as mentioned in the Bible, in the book of the Kings, Solomon was the most successful king Israel ever had. When he was chosen to be the king at the death of his father David, he was a very young man. How this big responsibility of leading the country, ruling the country, was going to be for him a task. So as we read and listened the first reading, God comes in a dream and asks him, what would you like to ask? As of what's the gift, what's the blessing you like to have? And Solomon says, give your servant a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil. For who could govern this people of yours that is so great? In other words, Solomon could have asked anything for himself. Wealth, long life as it is mentioned in the reading, or numerous servants, big palace. But he asked for wisdom. Wisdom to discern between what is good and evil. Wisdom to understand what it takes to serve people that is understood to his care. We wish, looking around in today's world, we had leaders who sincerely desired for this wisdom. Because we need more than ever leaders who can genuinely reach out to care and serve people. But that's not the story, that's not the reality we are confronted with. When we come to Gospel, we have been reading and listening from the Matthew's Gospel, and in the recent times we have been hearing about different parables that Jesus used to describe, to explain about the Kingdom of God. Again, today, we hear Jesus using the parable of the treasure. 
parable of the pool, parable of the dragnet. All these finding a treasure, finding the most important, significant treasure. And also, towards the end, Jesus also talks about judgment. Finding the true treasure enables us to go out to serve. Just as Solomon wanted the gifts and blessings that he needed to serve his people. This is what we need to desire each and every day of life. I was reading one of the reflections. Father Brian Gleason, one of the Passionist priests, writes every weekend for the, for the homily. And in it, he, dis, he writes, there is a school, Catholic school in Fiji. And as you enter, you see this uh, caption written at the gate. Enter to learn, leave to serve. Does it ring a bell to us, brothers and sisters? Does our young ones, or do our young ones end up to learn? And what do they learn? They are taught to be successful. They are driven to be successful, sometimes at the cost of their own lives and the lives of other people. Because we are driven in a, we are in a, living in a society driven by success. A person's value or worth is determined by how much that person is successful in what he does or what she does. Becoming a servant, going out to serve sincerely, genuinely, is not the focus at all. A training, a formation that we need to be servants of one another. And that caption sounds really great. Enter to learn, live to serve. I think about my life sometimes. Now standing here at the pulpit and giving this sermon. But there was a time I was so nervous, I wasn't able to come in front of a crowd or a group because I was so shy, I was nervous. And I, I knew I didn't have it in me. And I couldn't sing. I couldn't do many things. So I used to wonder during the initial years of my formation, what am I here for? What am I capable of? I can't sing, I can't uh, give a homily, or I can't preach, I can't face people. I feel so shy to go out of myself, to make friends. And being a priest, you need to be out there. You need to interact with people, which I wasn't able to. Because I realized I had a very restricted upbringing, very controlled upbringing. And towards the uh, end of my sixth year in the seminary, before we enter into novitiate, where we learn about the congregation and spirituality, and before we profess our vows, my rector knew exactly what I was going through, because I used to share with him sincerely what was my struggles. He asked me and my companion to take a year off and go for a pastoral year. I thought that was a wonderful thing to do because I was unsure of myself, I was struggling. So I went to this disabled center run by a group of religious nuns who take care of uh, people of different kinds, elderly, people who are physically or mentally disabled, children. And I was sent to 
this particular ward were disabled people, men, who were taken care. As I entered, I could smell the stink because the place was quite dirty. And I realized there was only this elderly nun who was taking care of these dozen men who were bedridden. So I hesitated to enter because of the stinging, because of the smell. It was something that was very new to me. And I wasn't sure whether to enter and enter into and do what is required of me, what was asked of me. But I thought to myself standing there, hey Jos, what are you standing there for? You are not good at singing. You can't sing, definitely. I tried a couple of times and I was laughed at, so I gave up. You can stand up in front of a crowd and you can't preach, you can't face people, you can't make friends. What, what are you standing there for? This is the chance. If you don't get in and do what is asked of you, future will be very hard. Brothers and sisters, I entered and never looked back. I can now face thousands of people. I may not be a great pre preacher, but I can, with confidence, face people. I can make friends. I can meet people. I can talk to people. I can't sing anyway. So this is what I think the message is, finding that true treasure. Sometimes it can, it can be finding or discovering your own self. What are you? In those days of serving there, I realized I had a heart that was caring, a heart that was loving, which my rector used to tell me, Jos, you, had a, you have a good heart. You are a cheerful person. But it did not enter into my head and make me realize. And I didn't think having a good heart and having a Caring heart would make a successful or effective priest. But I realized a heart that is caring, a heart that is compassionate, a heart that is loving can make an effective priest. I found my true treasure. Jesus, who told me, who guided me, who showed me amidst the sufferings of people, the cries and tears of people, his face. Brothers and sisters, we continue to pray because we struggle, we are confused, we are angry, we are sad, frustrated. All that we can think of, we are, because of this uninvited pandemic, unprepared. Can we sit down and pray, God, give us the true wisdom. Give us the true grace to trust in you because you can find a way out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the last tomb. Amen.
The Lord speaks to us as he spoke to King Solomon. Ask what you would like me to give you. In prayer, let us come to him and seek the hidden treasure, the pearl of the kingdom. For our Pope and bishops, as they work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of nations afflicted by poverty, famine and injustice, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those working for a fair distribution of the food and resources of the earth, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our own efforts to choose the hidden treasure of personal faith and prayer, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are suffering from the coronavirus, that healing and restoration may be given to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of provident love, you call people into your kingdom. You make all things work to their good. We are confident that you hear our prayers and that you will grant our request through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice and praise be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. This weekend we are using the Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just uh, that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Amaust, Plenis ut celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are cease, ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the wine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Peter our Bishop. Help us to work together for the com coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. When freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other that sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I now invite you to pray together the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us this day. The Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is tender, let us live in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 